Hello everyone! Welcome to Physify, a series of video tutorials on the Signboard channel. I'm your tutor, Sir Jose. Have you ever wondered how we can see an invisible push or pull? In this video, we're going to solve the mystery of forces around us. Our mission is to become force detectives. By the end of this video, you will be able to represent any force with a simple arrow and uncover all the hidden forces acting in any situation. So, let's grab our detective tools and begin. Force, as you have already known, is an action. It is a push or a pull. And by saying that it is a push or pull, then we mean there are objects interacting. Example, opening the door. The one that does the action, or let's call it the interactor, is your hand, because that's the part of you that has a direct contact with the doorknob, which is a part of the door, since the doorknob is attached to it. The action is the pull, and that's exerting a force. The effect of the exerted force is the motion of the door, because it will swing open. And the receiver of the force is, of course, the door. Now, how about in the situation where an object interacts with its surroundings, like the falling apples. What's the interactor here? Correct, it's the Earth. The action is a gravitational pull downward. The receiver is the apple. Now, the apple has mass because it's made of matter. When gravity pulls that mass, we call that force weight. This pull causes the apple to fall faster and faster. This change in speed is what we call acceleration. On Earth, this acceleration due to gravity or in other words, because of gravity, is about 9.8 meters per second squared. This is always directed downward. We'll explore that more in a future video. But for now, just remember, weight is a force and it points downward. Force is a vector quantity because it has magnitude and direction. Magnitude is the size or amount of the force exerted and it is measured using the unit Newton. N is the symbol for this unit. And just a bit of information, this is in honor of Sir Isaac Newton. He has a lot of contributions in understanding the gravity, light, motion, mathematical concepts, and more. Alright everyone, let's take a quick riddle break before we continue. Two boys, Gage and Ivan, were pushing two carts with the same size and weight. Both boys started from the same initial position or starting point and both exerted the same amount of force, which is 50 newtons. They started pushing at the same time and stopped 
after 15 seconds. The floor was equally smooth. So, both their carts rolled easily. Despite all this, their carts ended up in different final positions. How is this possible? Exactly. They pushed in different directions. Let's revisit our understanding of directions. We have four cardinal directions, north, east, west, and south, and this direction are fixed. To map these directions, we use a mathematical model called the Cartesian plane. Direction is important in vectors because it makes magnitude or value a close description of the physical reality. Imagine if we know how strong the recent typhoon Tino is, but we don't know to what direction it is moving. The magnitude gives us an idea of the level of danger, but the direction tells us who are in danger. In our example, typhoons, direction turns the magnitude a scary number into an important mental tool for decision making and survival. In our previous video, you were able to know the names of the forces that are existing in our surroundings. And at the end, you had an activity. Let's go over the answers. For the first situation, we have the spring ride. The interactor is the spring. The direction of the force is upward. And it's a contact force because there is a spring or restoring force from the spring itself. Next is the rubber duck floating on the water. The interactor is the water and the direction is the upward or pushing force. It's a contact force because the force from the water is a buoyant force. Next is the strings tied on the kites. The interactor are the strings. The direction is downward because it's pulling the kite and it's a contact force. Tension force is present on the strings. Then we have the rough ground against the broom. The interactor is the rough ground and the direction of the force is opposite to the direction of the broom. So usually, it's a pushing force. It's a contact force because there is frictional force on the ground. Then we have the magnets attracting metals and repelling other magnets. The interactor, the magnets. The direction R toward the magnet if there is attraction and it's in the opposite direction if it's a repulsion. It's a non-contact force or from the magnetic force. Next is the falling parachute. The interactor is the earth where the direction of the force is downward. It's a non-contact force because it's the gravitational force. Next is the girl pushing a cart. The interactor is the girl's hands. The direction is toward the handle of the cart. It's a contact force because it's an applied force. Then. We have the hair strands sticking on the balloon. The interactor is the charged balloon. Then the direction is toward the surface of the balloon. 
it's a non-contact force because it is the electrostatic force. And then we have paper planes gliding in the air. The interactor is the air. The direction is opposite to the direction of the gliding paper plane. It is the air resistance. And finally, we have the sitting position or standing. The interactor is the supporting ground. The direction of the force is upward and it's a contact force because it's the normal force. You're doing great in identifying forces. Now, let's investigate a bit further. If you observe the situations carefully, you'll see that the objects in our activity don't just have one force acting on them. This is why I specified the source of the force to make sure you identified the correct type. For example, in the situation sweeping the floor, I said the source was the rough ground. So, the force was friction. But what if the source was the hand? Then the force would be an applied force. Also, the broom has weight due to gravity pulling it down. And the ground supports it with an upward normal force. Note that all four of these forces are acting on the same object, the broom. To illustrate how these forces act on a single object, we used our visual model, the arrows. But as you can see, it looks messy. This is where we use our conceptual model, the free body diagram. We represent the object as a simple dot and draw all force vectors originating from that dot using the Cartesian plane to define their directions. Let's have a simpler example. The standing girl. The dot has an upward normal force and a downward gravitational force or the weight. Now it's your turn. Download the free activity sheet from the link in the comment section to practice your detective skills. You see, in reality, multiple forces act on every object. We can't see these forces directly. So, we use arrows and the Cartesian plane in a free body diagram to visualize and analyze them. So, let's have a recap of the things that you learned from this video. First, force is a vector, so it needs magnitude and direction. We represent it with an arrow. Multiple interactors mean multiple forces on one object. And the Cartesian plane is our map to make sense of the forces. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and follow us on Facebook. See you in the next part of our video tutorials.